Hey everybody, uh, alright, don't lead code, dirty day lead code challenge, day two, uh, happy number, uh, write an algorithm to determine if a number is happy, a happy number is a number defined by the following process, uh, starting with a positive integer, replace the number by the sum of squares of its digits, and repeat the process until the number equals 1, where it stays, or it loops endlessly in a cycle that does not include 1, uh, those numbers for which this process ends in 1 are happy numbers, okay, Oh, why is my default C++? I could do it in C++ now, it's not a big deal. Um, eh, but I'm going to do it in Python, just because it's slightly easier. So I think this is one of those things where um, it's a little bit tricky, in the sense that, I mean, programming-wise, it's not that hard. I mean, you you do what you you do what the problem tells you and hope for the best. Uh, for me, there's a little bit of a nuance, um, in the sense that, um, in the sense that, like, because it's like a mathy thing, uh, you have to prove yourself correct, or you don't have to. I mean, but I do. I, I try to think about like, okay, like, what are the scenarios in which this, um, you know, like, can you prove that it actually, you know, gets to one eventually? And you know, you could do the math. It's actually you can prove this, but but still, these are things that I will think about and be like, eh. like I would not immediately jump into implementation unless it's a contest. But that's another story. Uh, for an interview, this is more like a really straightforward interview question in the sense that uh, you're probably expected to know this. Uh, even though it's a little bit weird, the problem is not a. There's no problem solving in the problem, but uh, so you expect to just code it up and then do it, right? Um, I mean, the tricky thing is detecting cycle, uh, which I think this goes by different names, but I like the row function will uh, solve this for you, uh, and how you implement that is kind of just. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Just keeping uh, track uh, a set of numbers you've always seen, and that should be good enough, right? Uh, and you could probably, and as I said before, uh, you may, in theory, worry about like the bounds of this. Um, like, what if you start with a big number? Does do the numbers get bigger? And like, for example, um, in this case, sixty-eight goes to hundred, so it gets higher. So how can you prove that it terminates? How much space would it use? So these are things that if you're an interview. Uh, you talk about because this takes about like five minutes to implement anyway or five to ten minutes uh, So you should talk about your thought process and how to um, you No, know, not just dive into code as people say uh, But yeah, but that said uh, you I'm gonna just dive right into code uh, Cool And I'm gonna do a little bit and this is probably not Well, this is definitely not what I'm about to write is definitely not production code and definitely maybe not given interview code, but um, now I'll do it the interview code. I'll do it the clean way. So what I now I'll show you a couple of ways to what what I was thinking about. So if I was in a uh, in a competition, I, I'll just be like, okay, let's just do like let's take each digit and then sum it up and then do it right. So I'll I'll, I'll have like a, a function, just call it f of, of x, and then I don't know for each digit in x. Uh, and we converted the string, which is maybe a little bit iffy. All right, let's just do it the queen way first. Um, and then, you, yeah, while x is greater than 0, uh, and then you, know, you keep track of a variable, or I guess it's... I like naming stuff sum, but sum is like a, a keyword in Python, so I always get a little bit weird about it. I end up writing s, which is technically true as a variable, but it's a little bit harder to read, which I don't like, but that's another story. That's a lot of stories. Um, but yeah, you just take one digit at a time, use the mod function, and then you sh right shift it by one decimal digit, and then you just return s, and that's your, your function that they tell you to implement. Um, and then it's just while n is not 1, right? can it be negative? I guess it can be negative, and it cannot be 0, so just greater than 1, or... Um, well, I think that's technically slower than not one. Uh, and then, as we said, we need a uh, a set of stuff we've already seen. Um, okay. And then at the end, our base case is just if n is equal to one, then it's happy. If it's not, then yeah, then it's happy. But let's just do f is equal to f. I mean, n is equal to f sub f. No, 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 no. N is equal to f sub n, and then. I think that should be good enough. Uh, oh, there's only one case.
Hmm. Well, would be embarrassing if I was 10 ODB well. <laughs> um, I think also a lot of people are just doing it right now, maybe. That's why it's slow. So I am prone to getting time limited exceeded, but even time limit exceeded should have been exceeded by now. Um, okay, well, I guess now is a good time to double check my code because what else am I doing? Uh, hmm. Oh, well, yeah, uh, we looked at the scene, but we forgot to put it in, so, uh, so that's not fun. So this would actually, uh, we talked about it, oops. Um, there we go. That said, I guess the system, um, the, uh, the leak code server is probably just for, I, I don't know, I, I mean, I, I want to say you don't really need to do this at, uh, at the, Switch up the clock, but it, that's it. I'm here now, so who am I to complain? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that's just mostly it. I think the only other thing that we also say is that uh, well, test all the obvious cases like one, two, unknown error. The unknown error is probably not enough server capacity, uh, and then just some big number. And also, um, well, this actually overflows in, so just do like. But, but yeah, you could also, so I was alluding to it earlier, and you could prove to yourself, maybe server is just having issues, and uh, I'm going to pretend this is right for now. Uh, oh, no. Hmm. I7. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I keep track of the last one, but still, it should just loop in a seven, right? Let's not change that. <laughs> oh, I misread the problem. It seems like that's the comment I'm getting. I forget to script, so turns out uh, turns out reading the problem is hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay, fine. I don't know how I got it. It was right for so many random cases too, <laughs> uh, and that's why you have to. But wow, that is uh, <laughs> embarrassing. But now, but but that shows you, you know, uh, sometimes you could rush through things and still um, and. Or just forget. I forgot. I just forgot about the reading. I, I think I was reading, uh, thinking about another problem for it. But uh, yeah, still wrong though. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at what I'm doing. Hmm. With the ser slow server. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, this never runs because yeah. Okay. Well. I need a do while loop, that's what I need, but okay. Little silly mistakes aside. <laughs> well 
But uh, ooh. well, yeah, of course, this is always zero. But uh, okay, answer right there. Now let's try again. Now that I actually use x to square function. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so there are a couple of th things to to uh, <laughs> one is all, 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 and this is why we test. But uh, I think I was just and well, clearly a little bit lazy on the testing. I just test random numbers, and they happen to be right. Uh, and that's one thing that um, at least in comp uh, I think I would have been more careful about. Uh, one thing is well, there are a couple of uh, points to learn from this for me anyway. Is that one is um, you know never underestimate problems. I think when I'm in a competitive programming mode, uh, I definitely spend a little bit more time thinking about it. And in this case, um, your return results, I mean, you know, there's some trade-off between uh, confidence and submission speed, which in competitive programming matters. And obviously in an interview, take all the time you need, uh, or like maybe you don't have 45 minutes for this because this is too easy a minute problem to give 45 minutes to as an interview. But, you know, asking people like, hey, how, many, how, you know, how much time do I have? Uh, it's like five, ten minutes. Okay, let's talk about the problem, and then like you know, make sure you go away. Uh, and also, to be honest, um, if you have to write idea when you, and I, that's why I always advocate talking about a problem first. Is that when you have to write idea and you have typos, sometimes the interviewer would be nice enough to be like, oh yeah, you actually now it's, and like for in this case, um, if I mostly see like the person has it mostly right except for this like square thing, now then I would be like, hey, oh yeah, you just you know line six, you forgot to square. Like it, it's a minor thing. Like sometimes, especially uh, in an interview, uh, as an interviewer, I will assume that the interviewee is a little nervous and stuff like this. Especially on a on a thing where like someone got it ninety nine percent right or something like that, and most of the idea is right. And we talked about you know if you show that you actually know what you're talking about and it's just a silly mistake and it's a one off, then you know they give you the benefit of the doubt. Where if you jump right in and you have to make a mistake, then they might be like, oh, mm, like I'm not sure, like like you know. I start off from a state as an interviewer, like I'm not sure what you're thinking, and I'm still not sure what you're thinking because you're making these mistakes and being a little careless, right? Um, so I think talking through a problem will help you through that. Uh, two is, uh, this is one of those problems for computer programming and also just in general, uh, where the result is a binary result, is a true or false result. So you might run into things where, uh, and this happens sometimes where I call it like, I just call it like a, uh, uh, and a lot, uh, I call it like you're lucky, but not really, in the sense that like it passed all your tests. And sometimes this happens anyway, like for non-binary results. But it's just that you know, like it's less likely to be like this stylistically, right? Um, for binary results, like I actually am less confident about the answers, even if I pass all my things. And here, maybe on doing it live, I was just a little bit lazy, and you know, uh, clearly. But um, but yeah, so then I would actually like you know think through like okay, or or in this case maybe I would print out the input and output and then verify that like you know in this case for the input of nineteen, even though you're you're only giving one example, uh, if you show show each step of the way here, uh, every n and f f n, um, then it'll show like oh nineteen eighty two sixty eight hundred and you you know that'll give you a lot more confidence. Um, and that would take like five seconds to you know type as a print and just wrote a vibe, maybe like twenty seconds, say. Uh, which for most competitive programming, like twenty and interviews, obviously, uh, twenty seconds is nothing. In the code, it's a little bit weird, maybe in that sense. But uh, so yeah, so definitely think about that. Uh, but overall, this is, and we talk about the math. I I think I will leave it as an exercise for you to prove why this terminates. Uh, or you could just do it exhaustively and test every number from one to you know, two billion or whatever to prove to yourself. So you can prove it in a number of ways. Uh, but I'll leave that to the viewers at home. So uh, so yeah, so that's all I have for this problem. Uh, day two <laughs> was a little bit interesting for me in that I made a couple of certain mistakes, but that allowed me to talk about, you know, like how to, put, you know, uh, if you're doing interviews and stuff like this, like chances are you're not going to be 100% all the time and clearly I'm not, but so... So, you know, you try to set things up in a way such that, you know, the interviewer will have a better idea of who you are and how you think about these things. Uh, so that when you do make those, I want to say 1%, but maybe I make more than 1% mistakes, uh, you know, you're like, okay. So it's not like irrecoverable, right? 
like like the wrong way to think about it is like oh I make a mistake and then be, and then the interviewer is like hey maybe look at this line it's like no that line is right like then your interviewer will be like mm, will definitely quickly write oh Larry doesn't uh, take hints very well or it doesn't work well with others or something because you're not even like listening right so there are a lot of stuff where like if you talk and you communicate and you chat then it'll allow you know a, a, a better margin of error uh, and like just people just see who you are and you know then that you're not you know not a mean person they want to you know and it, it even on the coding portions like people just want to uh, have people they you know are happy to work with so yeah okay I think that's all I have for this poem uh, stay you know come back tomorrow I'll probably do another I mean I'll do another one hit the like button subscribe button and all that stuff uh, yeah thanks yeah, so actually you can do this poem without doing set, as we talked about a little bit, alluded to. So you could, uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, the, the row function. So actually there's another strategy for, uh, so you can think about uh, this as a graph problem actually even, uh, if you really think about, uh, if you want to, where uh, there's an edge from n to f sub m, right? Uh, or f of n. Uh, so th that's your edge, for, and then you can think about it as a, you know, like a graph from that respect. And this is actually like a very classic um, interview problem, which I, I don't know if I've seen in a while, but it's a classic interview problem of, uh, okay, now you're given a graph uh, or, well, okay. Maybe a graph is a little bit, even, or like a simpler version of a graph where it's a linked list, right? Uh, so you have a linked list of, okay, let's say your first node is, you have an N pointing to F sub N and then you have a, F sub n that points to F sub n of n and then so forth, right? Um, and then now you're wondering whether, uh, oh jeez, <laughs> and then you're now you're wondering two things. Uh, one is well whether it gets to the number one, and then the second thing is whether there's a loop, right? Um, so, and once you do that reduction, you re recognize that this is just finding uh, a cycle in, uh, in a linked list. And there's a very, uh, maybe a little bit brain teaser, uh, I think Freud or someone, uh, have this algorithm called uh, the turtle and the, the rabbit and the turtle, or, tur uh, or turquoise or whatever, uh, or rabbit and, you know, basically the hare and the turtle, uh, you know, the, which is, you know, the classic story of, um, I guess actually it's not related to that classic story. Now that I think about it, the fable or whatever. But anyway, but but what what you do then, in, and you don't want to use this O of n space, which is you know maybe your your uh, interviewer will ask you like, hey, you know what about this? Yeah, you know, now you did an O of n space. Can you do an O of one space, right? So what what you would do actually, in, in the same logic of doing the linked list, that you have, you have two variables, uh, one that moves two step forward, and one that moves one step forward. And then eventually, either the faster uh, variable, which is the, uh, the, the rabbit, the hare, uh, will either get to one, or the hare will go all the way back and then see the turtle. And when that happens, then it is a loop, right? So that's how you would also think about it. Um, but also, you know, so that's actually an interesting uh, addendum to the poem. Uh, but yeah, if you, <laughs> uh, cool.